Listen to the 48 Hours podcast for shocking murder cases and compelling real life dramas from one of television's most watched true crime shows. Go behind the scenes of each episode with award winning CBS News correspondents and producers in Post Mortem, a weekly deep dive. Listen to 48 Hours wherever you get your podcasts. Spinner. Welcome to Notebook, a guide to art, culture and tourism in Tokyo. I'm Stuart Munro and around this time each Monday, Wednesday and Friday, I'll bring news and views from Japan. On today's episode, we look forward to several film screenings. But first, volcanoes. With Indonesian villages evacuated following the volcanic eruption of Mount Semira in East Java over the weekend, Japan's meteorological agency was said to be closely watching for any sign of an ensuing tsunami. It had warned one could arrive at the islands of Miyako and Mayama near Okinawa, but they'd said any tsunami now making its way to Japan was more than unlikely. Meanwhile, three British men have been detained in Britain over their alleged robbery of over 100 million worth of jewellery from central Tokyo in 2015. The three Britons left Japan two days after the robbery and were put on Interpol's international wanted list by Japanese police. The men are suspected of taking 46 pieces of jewellery worth 106 million yen, having assaulted one male security guard and breaking display cases at the Harry Winston shop in Omotisando Hills, Shibuya. But whether the three men will ever be brought back to this country depends on a court in Britain, where there is no extradition treaty with Japan. Shifting tectonic plates and stolen gems aside, one lost or overlooked gem of recent cinema is Duo, directed by Nobuhiro Suwa and starring Hidetoshi Nishijima in one of his first films, no more recently for playing the lead in Yusuke Hamaguchi's Academy Award winning Drive My Car. Now the LA-based label Arbelos is screening duo this Friday to mark its 25th anniversary at Metrograph in New York. The film was Sue's second feature, originally a scripted psychodrama that evolved into something very different once he dispensed with his script, working closely with his actors in an approach seemingly inspired by Jacques Verrett's Le Morfou from 1968 and Out One from 1971. Starring the actress Ellie Yu as a boutique saleswoman, with Nishijima as an unsuccessful actor, it's the quotidian story of a young couple. And their foundering relationship becomes, in Sue's hands, a fascinating meditation on performance in everyday life, intuitively shot by the cinematographer Masaki Tamura. As film critic Jonathan Rosenbaum writes, a genuine sense of existential danger and possibility courses through practically every scene in this film, with casual joking sliding into aggression, or an argument quickly dissolving into affection making this film real and vital. Back in Japan and several hours due north of Tokyo, Neko Mimi, directed by the experimental filmmaker Jun Kurosawa, will take place later this month at Center, an alternative space and hostel in Kanuma City. Kurosawa's first feature-length film from 1994 begins with a quote from the Samuel Beckett play Endgame and features three girls and a boy leading playful lives. But like any game played over and over again, their lives are also an endless repetition. With a storyline presented like a puzzle, it's hoped those watching might reflect on the filmmaking pulling at their strings from behind the scenes. Unlike Beckett's play with its title referring to the game of chess, characters act out a losing battle with each other as they await some unspecified end, be it the end of their relationship, death, or the end of the film itself. Born in 1964, Kurosawa studied at Tama Art University and was taught by Sakumi Hagiwara, a renowned underground stage actor, director and video artist. And like his tutor before him, he was drawn towards contemporary art rather than independent or studio-based filmmaking. Now 28 years later, after the film was made, a Japanese-based kraut film has overseen a 2K digital restoration from the existing 16mm print. And following its screening at centre, Director Kurosawa will be in attendance to discuss the film along with his other work. 
Nobuhira Suwa's duo will be screened at Metropolis in New York this coming Friday, December 17th, while Jun Kurosawa's Nekomimi will be screened at Center, the alternative space and hostel in Kanuma City, close to Nikko, on December the 17th. That's all for now. I'll be back for this week's second instalment on Wednesday, December the 7th. If you enjoyed this episode, you might consider rating us on Apple Podcasts or think about spreading the word online. Until then, thanks for listening. This is Notebook. Notebook.